Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. You know, I said I wasn't coming back on until the holiday was over, but I got a passion for this thing that I do. And, you know, the love of my supporters, my Kelly Nation supporters, are first and foremost um, relative to why I do what I do. So I had to get back on. This is September 1st, 2022. I'm going to be recording this podcast and I just want to just take the time out and say, God bless all of us who are giving our sentiment, positive energy towards Robert Sylvester Kelly, because he is, he is so in need of that at this moment, you know, though about five hours ago, R. Kelly's lawyers, um, start their defense process, according to ABC News. And he says, or Kelly says, that he won't be testifying. He talked to Judge Lennon, Lennon Weber, and um, he says he won't be testifying. Now, I do believe that I put in one of the live chats yesterday or earlier today that the denial, the motion to acquit was denied. And that was a that was false. I was reading something that was given to another motion from 2019. So that is still on the table as we speak as of right now from documentation that's out. So until I hear more, I will let you know. But as of right now, that is null and void. That is not the truth. That was something from 2019. So the motion as of right now is still being decided. I thought he had until 10 a.m. today in order to make the decision on the motion. But anyway, this is uh, true information that I'm sending out now by Michael Tarm, a legal affairs writer for ABC News, and this was noted September 1st, 2022. R. Kelly began trial Monday. Singer R. Kelly faces child pornography and obstruction of justice charges in Chicago, the Associated Press. R. Kelly's lawyers began mounting a defense Thursday in Chicago against federal charges of child pornography, enticement of minor for sex, and fixing his 2008 state trial. This looks like it is still part of pieces that were put together. But this part seems new. Judge Harry Lennon Weber asked Kelly directly on Thursday morning, which is today, if he would testify. And the Grammy Award winner responded that he would not. The judge raised the issue minutes before attorneys for Kelly and two co-defendants began calling their first witnesses, endeavoring to counter two weeks of government testimony, including from four women who accused Kelly of sexual abuse. So what is taking place right now is R. Kelly is saying, I'm not going to say anything. I have not said anything. You can't hold me in contempt or question me regarding what other people are saying about me. So I'm afraid that if I get on this stand, you're going to cross-examine me in a way in which you will trap me up. So it's best for me to shut my mouth and allow my judge to speak through God's nature to help to support me. The judge raised the issue minutes before attorneys for Kelly and two co-defendants began calling their first witnesses. In endeavoring to counter two weeks of government testimony. Okay. Co-defendant Daryl McDavid and longtime Kelly business manager is accused of helping Kelly rig the 2008 trial at which Kelly was acquitted. So McDavid is not going to tell on himself as much as so that, you know, even if he is granted this immunity, R. Kelly is saying that if anybody is going to perjure themselves on that stand, let it be them. They were doing their own thing. And I don't know what was going on. I was singing. I was doing my part as a singer. So let's let them tell their part. And then we pick it apart as we do. 
So testifying would have been risky. At times, Kelly has exploded in anger under tough questionings, which could hurt his defense. He lost his cool in a 2019 interview with Gail King on CBS this morning. As she pressed him about accusations of sexual abuse, he jumped up crying and, and gesticulating. I don't know what that word is. I didn't do this stuff, he shouted. This is not me. I'm fighting for my life. Lawyers for all three defendants are essentially sharing witnesses. McDavid's legal team called the first defense witness. McDavid friend and former police officer Christopher Wilson. He testified that McDavid told him in 2001 that a merchandising agent for Kelly, Charles Freeman, was trying to blackmail the R&B star. Mm. Mm. It makes sense. Freeman testified earlier for the government that Kelly and his associates agreed to pay him $1 million to hunt down and return a video that featured Kelly describing how he was handed bags full of cash as payment. He said the money was for, a, for services rendered, not an extortion bid. I don't believe that. Prosecutors say that the payments were part of the conspiracy to obstruct investigators leading up to Kelly's 2008 trial. It could be or it couldn't. Look at it. It's very balanced. And the balance, the fulcrum must balance in a court of law. So that means that truthfully, it could have been an extortion upon Charles Freeman. I do have a tape. I do have a tape because the very tape in which they're speaking of held no precedence in the court of law when it came down to prosecution promising us that they were going to present this, 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 and this. And they were going to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they were going to do it. So a conviction of just one or two of the charges at the Chicago trial could add years to a 30-year sentence already received from a New York federal judge in June for convictions on racketeering and sex trafficking charges. That's going to be reversed as well. Because that's why that needed to come up in order to try to make Chicago look worse than what it really was. But the appeal process is God is working that out as well right now. Via witnesses Thursday, the defense also sought to raise doubts about the ages of a few accusers, saying at, at least one of many, at least one may have been 17. The age of consent in Illinois at the time, Kelly pursued her for sex. There was nothing necessarily sinister about Kelly or his workers dealing in cash. Another defense witness, former Kelly studio intern Tom Arnold, told jurors Kelly rarely used his own credit cards and preferred cash transactions, added Arnold, who said he once carried $125,000 to Kelly in a backpack. The highlight of prosecutors' presentation was the testimony two weeks ago of a 37-year-old woman who used the pseudonym Jane. She described Kelly's sexual abuse um, hundreds of times starting in 1998 when she was 14 and Kelly was around 30. Closing arguments are expected to happen in the middle of next week. So when I read that the they were talking about the federal judge rejects R. Kelly's bid to dismiss Illinois child pornography uh, motion. I was under the assumption that that was today, but it was for June 30th, 2022. So he had already denied that. So when I looked at the date, I'm like June 30th, 2022. No, that was one motion that she had already applied for that wasn't granted at the time. But do you see how everything is coming to the surface? Everything is coming up. Um, it's coming forward for Robert. And again, silence can speak so loud. So to me, if I'm looked at as this person and another person is getting trapped up in their lies about me, it could be looked, it could be looked at as very slanderous. Slander is the terminology. Slander. I should say 160. Slander. So I'm going to go over here to the live chat for tonight. And um, it was good. Very good. And I wanted to say that 
everyone in Kelly Nation as supporters are very in good spirit. And I love that when I seen that because I, my, today it just wasn't feeling right. My energy was so depleting, you know, depleted. It felt like it was depleting itself. But when I came on and I saw Timothy say, hey, I talked to Connie and Connie was like, hey, and Mila and Shay and Ronald, everybody was so into it. Sophia all the way from overseas came through and Linda, you know, and Wanda, you know, she says that she says so many great things. Ray, you were awesome as well. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome as always. Alma, Frankie, and Johnny, and wise, intelligent. I mean, you, you, you guys really made this. You made me come back. You made me love you, babe. <laughs> you remember that song? <laughs> but I mean, it was all about me coming back and sharing this information with you. Because the weekend could be a long time. And I want you to understand that I'm not going to leave you hanging here at R. Kelly Appeal TV. So we heard that the USA government, according to Sophia, failed already to believe the lies of all those ladies. Let's us know that we need to free our friend, our beloved friend, Robert Sylvester Kelly. And he should come to Nambia. You've been saying that, Sophia. You, you've been saying that for a long time. Ray, hell to the no. No deal. Lisa mailed it. She should be charged for interstate of commerce if it is porn. Absolutely. Wasn't she the one that did the mailing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to me, like I said earlier... It's real easy for somebody to blackmail someone who feels that they're caught up in a situation. And I believe not just the situation of my body, your body being on a videotape. It's more of the situation that blackmail. I will say this. I will just say this because that's what it looks like to me. Like prosecution just threatened and threatened to the point where now it's like you've bluffed so much. Until you have nothing else to say and you don't even have the tape. So at what point do we say that uh, if any trafficking took place as far as the video for a minor in pornography, if it was him on the tape or if it wasn't him on the tape, if she admits that it was her on the tape, does not necessarily Prove that it was Robert on the tape. So if it was getting back to him from one state to another state, whoever was the one that was intercommercing or interacting with the video and submitting it to whoever, even if it was to the Keith guy, it doesn't matter. You transported pornography. And that's what they're that's what they're saying, which as Wanda said, it's all double jeopardy. It's absolutely all double jeopardy. Ronald in the house. Leisha should be arrested. She mailed the tape for money. Kelly team was trying to get him back. No transport tape for money. Lisa should be arrested. Hopefully the jurors can analyze the truth from the lies. And that's where when I thought that Lennon Weber had said no to the motion. And I see that that's still being probably thought about at this point. I have to say to you that it didn't matter. Even if he does say no and he dismisses the motion to acquit, it doesn't matter because that's still on the books. So when it's said and done and the jury has made its verdict and deliberated on the punishment or not punishment, what's going to take place is if they say that it, he is guilty, that information goes into the appeal process, into the appeal packet. So Ray says, question, how is it child pornography when it was proven the females was of age at the time? The sexual part party was going on the birthdays and they didn't match up. You know, Ray, I don't know. And this is something that the jurors are going to have to sit back and deliberate on. So pretend we're the jurors sitting in that room. All 12 of us are listening to this. And somebody says just what you just said, Ray. 
that makes it easier. That makes it easier to put the presumption of doubt into the mind of all jurors to where it would be a hung jury as one gentleman always stated. He always stated on this situation that the jury, it may be that very one that will deliberate, deliberate, deliberate until they get to the bottom of it all. So let's continue to pray for victory in this case. That's what Linda tells us. And I think, Linda, that is the best solution for us as Kelly Nation supporters right now. Because, you know, someone said that R. Kelly couldn't make it to court today, but I think he was. I don't know if he was able to continue or if he was feeling a little sick or whatever they asked to resume tomorrow. But um, I'm not there in the courtroom, so I'm not sure. But I did read that from some blogger that that's what um, took place today. So we just need to continue. Um, and he won't be testifying. So I think, how, do, how does that make Kelly Nation supporters feel? Does that make you feel that he, you know, is hiding something, which that is not a defense. Just because you say nothing does not mean you're hiding something. Sometimes when you speak, it's because you are hiding something and you want to prove your point. This also puts into the mindset that R. Kelly is not a narcissist. He is a very humble man. He is not one that is built upon ego, even though he was in a position of egoic perception, according to the way others were looking at him, especially the haters of Robert Sylvester Kelly. So Linda says, it's not wise for R. Kelly to testify. It's too risky. The defense are asking questions that will speak for him. Exactly. The defense, Linda, is going to ask questions that's going to speak for him. And guess who else is going to speak for him? Daryl McDavid is going to speak for him. And June Brown is going to speak for him. Um, I feel that based on what they say will incriminate themselves or it will make him, they've already started the whole process. I believe again that this whole concept, even though the prosecution may have set out to make money and help these women get record deals and movie deals and book deals, the, the devil was in the details. And when the devil's in the details, God is always there to have that little ram in the bush to support the defense, to, def to support the one who is the true victim. So I feel that even in this instance, it's going to be a victorious time for Robert because the lies are coming home to roost. They're coming home. And she says, um, let me see. This is why, let me see. It's not wise for Kelly to testify. It's too risky. The defense will ask questions that the defense are asking questions that will speak for him. Yeah. So Bonjean is going to ask questions in the leading way because it's not for defense to prove that he's not guilty. The, the purpose of this trial is for prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that they have enough information to say that he did this or he did that. And so far they don't have it. They just don't have it. Um, Linda, as well as the jury, you know, as well as, as, as well as the jury, keep the prayers up for faith for R. Kelly and Bonjean and the jury that they see through the calculating miscommunication and miseducation of the court system. And like I said, Lennon Weber, he's not going to use anything and you know, you could also say that Lennon Weber may not have even wanted to know what was under the seal. It was up to him to make that decision. And it was under the court jesters to make that decision. Um, Sophia says, oh, yes, Ray, Lord, our God is not a human being, but God Almighty is in control and will free my beloved friend, Robert Kelly. And I believe that, Sophia, you make me feel so good. Um, and this is why I said that he can only do as much as God allows. That's it. 
So then Bell says, greetings, everyone. My belief is that the tapes are no longer being looked at. No more on the prosecutor's case. They can't bring anything in anymore because they can't prove it. They are focused on supposed minor number one testimony. And that was the biggest ta-da moment that prosecution had. So how does that make you feel, Kelly Nation? How does that make you feel to know that they wasted the taxpayers' time and money on a double jeopardy case that they promised was not double jeopardy, but everyone was stating that it was double jeopardy? He will win. He will win. Wanda says, free RSK and everyone's family have a blessed and safe holiday. Peace and love from Chicago. We thank you, Wanda, and we thank you, thank you. And she says, nobody but God. So, I mean, I'm just sitting here waiting on appeal. I really and truly want to maneuver that situation in. Um, mm, 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 mm. I, I want to see exactly what can be said, what can be said on the premise of all the things that's, that's coming out right now. How are people feeling who've turned on Robert Sylvester Kelly? How is... Joycelyn Savage doing? How's her pregnancy going? Is she going to still be with Robert? Will she stand, withstand the test of time? Did she just get the bag and run? You know, these are some major questions. Major severe questions that we have to answer. I mean, are we doing what we need to do here? Hold on to your spirit. Hold on to your, your love for Robert Sylvester Kelly. And yes, there are times where I will say things that, you know, make people consider and think. But it's always to be on the right side and to make sure that. Everyone knows that I'm on the side of justice for Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly, period. And I wonder what Judge Lennon Weber is actually feeling when he was told by R. Kelly today that he was not going to testify. You know, Lennon Weber was ready. He advised him of his rights, but jurors have been told they will hear from one of Kelly's co-defendants, uh, Daryl McDavid. They're going to take the stand if they haven't already um, when trial resumes Tuesday because of the holiday. The judge sent jurors home for a long weekend after defense called for five witnesses Thursday. Before testimony began, L Lennon Weber also denied motions from Kelly McDavid and a third defendant uh, assistant Milton June Brown for acquittal. The routine and rarely granted bid came after prosecutors rested their case earlier this week. Oh, so it was true. Um, they have already denied. Um, Lyndon Weber also denied. Now, this was from Chicago Times, and this was September 1st, 2022 at 4.50 p.m. So this was after I had done my, my uh, premiere earlier. So um, let's go down here. Kelly's trial on charges alleging obstruction of justice and enticing of minors into criminal sexual activity seems on track to conclude as early as next week. In fact, Lennon Weber told the jurors the case will conclude next week without fail. The trial has so far stretched over three weeks, including 11 days of testimony in which jurors heard from four alleged victims of Kelly's. They also viewed 17 clips from three videos alleging depicting Kelly's sexual abuse of a 14-year-old girl known as Jane. 
Prosecutors in this case say Kelly recorded his sexual abuse of Jane, abused four additional minors, conspired with Mick David to thwart his 2008 state court trial on child pornography charges, and also plotted with Mick David and Brown to hunt down incriminating, incriminating videotapes. Do you see how the prosecution broke that down? So yeah, that would be something that the jury would have to be like, wow, did he do all of that? But it's not true based on what they presented today. It was nothing like the beautiful mundane of words that they've used to make him look horrific. But defense attorneys have sought since opening statements to undermine the credibility of prosecutors' witnesses. Look at that. They are just, it. this is one-sided social media justice. Do you see how they're putting this? As well as the authenticity of the video seen by jurors, they continued that effort when they began, when they began calling witnesses Thursday. Um... And now they're saying the witnesses seem designed to counter specific testimonies heard earlier by the jury. For example, McDavid's attorney called Christopher Wilson, a former Chicago police officer and now a member of the protection detail for Cook County State's attorney, Kim Fox, to contradict prosecution witnesses, Charles Freeman. Freeman said Kelly asked him in 2001 to help him recover some tapes that he lost. He also described meeting around August 2001 with McDavid and Kelly's private investigator, Jack Palladino in Kansas City, Missouri, or in Minnesota. Is that, I can't remember, M.O. Um, Wilson said McDavid hired him to provide security to Palladino around August 2001, while Palladino met with someone with gang affiliations. Wilson said McDavid was not present when they met with the man. Another defense witness was called by Kelly's attorney to contradict an alleged victim referred to in court as Tracy. She told jurors she graduated from high school at age 16 in 1999, saw Kelly at an expo where he signed autographs that summer, and that he began to sexually abuse her when they met up afterwards. However, Tracy also filed a lawsuit in 2001 that said she met the singer in April 2000 when she was 17, the age of consent in Illinois. Now, Mary Green, president of MGPG Events, said her company was hired to put on the expo for today's black woman for radio station uh, V103 from 99 to 2001. During those years, she said Kelly only made a promotional appearance in 2000. She acknowledged that Kelly's former group, Public Announcement, appeared at the expo in 1999, but Kelly Attorney Jennifer Bonjean pointed out that Kelly left the group in 1993. So everybody knows his historical timeline and it's very, very uh, authentic. And this is why I believe Bonjean felt that, you know, an acquittal was, was, you know, on point because these people were lying, but it's okay because she still had to do that in order to file the appeal. So it is on the records that this is going to be filed. Finally, McDavis lawyer called Ronald Winters, a former personal assistant to the late attorney at Jensen to contradict Lisa Van Allen and Keith Murrow. The pair said they delivered incriminating video to McDavid in 07 that allegedly depicted Kelly having sex with Van Allen and Jane. Jensen represented Kelly at the time. Winner said he helped Jensen, who was disabled, with various tasks, including playing videotapes. He said he once played a tape brought to Jensen by McDavid of Kelly having sex with two females. One appeared to be Kelly's wife, Winner said. However, the alleged three-way encounter between Kelly, Van Allen, and Jane occurred in a room designed to look like a log cabin, according to trial testimony. Winner said he didn't remember that backdrop, but he also said he wasn't focused on it. Winner said, I'm not paying attention to the scenery. Who? So all of this is coming down to the bare nitty gritty. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? This whole child pornography thing is looking like he was really and truly dealing with 
individuals that possibly he could have met at a young age, but the goal was to make sure that they weren't available to him until a certain age. So, I mean, I went to, let me see if I can get my friend on the line, back on the line. Um, see what he has to say. Hold on. Question to you tonight is how are you feeling about that? About him having to go through the process? Yeah. Fully go through the process. Do you think that he's going to be okay? Yeah, I think that um, because you started going through the process, there's no need for you to try to, no, well, not you. Let me, let me rephrase. Um, he started going through the process um, earlier, early on, and there was no occur that you could think about. You couldn't think about it. You couldn't think about one being. Uh, or nobody thought about one being. So, you know, the reason why I feel like it's mine because it's too early in the game. Well, they only have like two more weeks, though, to make a jury solution or a recommendation anyway for them to deliberate. So it is early in the game. I get it. There's not enough evidence because we don't have the defense side to discuss, you know, what they know. But with him not testifying, what are you feeling about that personally? What? That it, do you feel that by him not testifying, it's a good thing or that he may be hiding something that, you know, he's waiting for? Daryl McDavid and June Brown to talk for him. Like, what what are your thoughts in any way on that? Him not him not speaking on his own behalf. Well, you know, you know, it's just, it's, it's just gonna feel the same way that it felt the last time when he tried to speak in the media. Mm-hmm. He tried to speak the trial himself, but it didn't. And they looked at him like, well, the, the people who had sight probably looked at him like, yo, you crazy. True. Mm -hmm. True. Because what you just said, I just touched on about 15 minutes ago in the podcast when I said that in one of the articles I read for, I think, ABC, they said specifically that it's too risky for him to go ahead and try to, you know, testify right now because he got so emotional. Um, yeah, in the Gail King uh, interview, I always want to call that incident. I don't know why I want to say the Gail King incident. But I always call it the incident. It wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't a real interview. I'll tell you what it was. It was an ambush and it was a good it was a, it was a good way for her to get the number up. Mm. And just to make him look like public opinion, huh? Mm hmm. Hmm. That's a good that yeah. Wow. You know, and so my my theory is I just want to I want to get this over because right now we're almost at that appeal process where, you know, even though Bonjean filed that motion for him to acquit because they wanted to acquit Daryl McDavid, June Brown and R. Kelly. But what they want to do now, they said no. Lennon Weber said no. So now what they're going to do is use that as a defense to fight the appeal. So she needed to put that into the paperwork because so that doesn't mean, my question is, that doesn't mean that they were found anything yet, right? Like that doesn't mean the verdict on right? Oh, no, 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 no. That's just if the jury finds him guilty or not, or, or yeah, if they found to find him guilty, then they're going to use that as a 
as a leverage, a balancing fulcrum in order to say, well, this was not supposed to be like how they're doing in the appeal for uh, federal Brooklyn. They're going to make sure that this is put on the record that, you know, there wasn't enough evidence in the Chicago trial. We asked them to acquit. They were wasting taxpayers' money. They were not, you know, looking at the fact that these women were on the stand lying under immunity. They have no reason to lie, but even their time frames wasn't correct. You know, and the fact that specifically, huh? And one got birthday on Wait, I can't hear you. You got to come to the phone a little bit more. You sound muffled. I said, I said one person forgot their birthday. Yeah. How do you forget your birthday? How do you not know you're 18? <laughs> Seriously. Like, that don't even... <laughs> it don't make sense. And this is what Bonjean is saying. We are wasting taxpayers' money. These jurors are over here, could probably be stressing out, like, oh God, we got to make this decision on this whole man's life. A whole man's life. A whole man. Not, not, a, not, a, not another decision about his job or his album or none of that. Mm -mm. A whole man's life. Yeah, no more sense, man. So, so what made him deny it? That's my question. What made him for it deny? What made him what? What made him deny the motion? Well, probably because he want to keep going. Because you know, somebody asked a question that was very valid um, last live, and it happened to do with. Does Lennon Weber know everything that's under seal? And I believe that because he is a court personnel, he has access to go to any any file and look up any document under any, you know, just like the people who look through his personal private uh, phone calls in in prison. You know, a judge is going to have access to all that. Right. So why wouldn't he know what, what is under seal? And especially, mm -hmm. especially if you are somebody who works in the prison system and you're giving that information to a YouTube off the net. So then you know the judge gonna be able to get all that information on him. Every song, every hit, how many times it hit. He probably got statistics on on uh, Robert Sylvester Kelly that you know the media don't got. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. so because this is dealing with how he expects the jury to deliberate a verdict. He's going to give them the laws. He can't give them personal, you know, innuendos that he knows something is sealed or unsealed. But I guarantee you, you that. Like, you mean like, like Ann Donnelly? You know what I'm saying? Right. You already know Ann Donnelly seen everything under seal. That's how she was yeah. so adamant the me too movement gave her all that information but all that's yeah. being worked out too here's somebody my thing said, mm -hmm. somebody said that her daughter uh helped with that lifetime yeah right? and that right there was a conflict of interest you know i heard this yeah because she was supposed to withdraw herself from that but what? yeah, she was supposed to withdraw herself because of conflict of interest. That's what any other uh, true judge in the mix. And I know Bonjean has that down in the um, in the um, appeal paperwork. Somebody said that on YouTube, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know if she was a part of that. She was part of the campaign of it. She was, and that was from a reliable source. It wasn't just a YouTuber. It was from a reliable source that, you know, yes. And she admitted to being part of that, um, that program. Okay. But I mean, beyond that, be, beyond the whole federal part of it, I'm back here to the Chicago part. And it's like that appeal situation has to go down. It has to go down. Because it's too many inconsistencies. Too many. 
it's so many that I feel like this. Hey, look, if he's down, if him, Newton, and and, and what's his name? Daryl. Uh, yeah, Daryl. If it went all, I I can't see Daryl being found out here. I I just can't. Well, it's more to me about we're going to wait and see what's going to happen. Um, me, myself, personally, I truly believe. And there was a clip that I, I read earlier in this podcast right here that I'm recording right now. And it said that uh, the guy extorted money from R. Kelly. Uh, the, 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 the Freeman, the Freeman guy extorted money. Not that R. Kelly, yeah, not that R. Kelly went to him and say, listen, man, you got to get this tape, man. You got to get this tape. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I'm a little bit frustrated about that and about the girl, like I said, when you are, when you are a minor traveling in air, I don't care if it was before 9-11. You are not going to be able to go somewhere with a password. I don't care how much money Robert paid for, or R. Kelly paid for her to go here, there, wherever. You're not going to go. Your parents are not that, you know, professional to the point where you're like a, a kid of the president. <laughs> Even yeah, a kid right. of the president has security with them. So the the stewardess on the on the flight has to be has to be available for this minor at all times while they're flying in air and they have to turn them over to uh that's like if if you get on the plane with somebody who can't read the plane right you need a chaperone. So yeah. you need to make sure that you're getting that. The stewardess needs to make sure that you're going to get to your right guardian. Not just the first person that's sitting there with a sign saying, I'm here for Tim. No. Yeah. And Tim is saying, I don't know you, dude. <laughs> oh, yes, you do, Tim. I'm the I'm the Pied Piper. <laughs> no. I don't know who this is. I don't even know your voice, sir. So the point, the point that we're making, Kelly Nation, here is that we're saying to be a minor who is traveling in air. Airtime is very vital and very influential. You have to have a signature from a guardian to board the flight and to get off the flight. Because where does your body go if you get lost? If you get on the wrong plane, you just can't have a password. And I understand R. Kelly had money like that. And I understand that that's a good way of them trying to manipulate a lie and, and, and try to manipulate a situation to make it make sense to other people. But they didn't realize that people were going to go back and look at how Delta Airline runs, how, you know, U.S. Air runs, you know? Yeah. And that minor could not, could not have been on that plane by herself like that. She couldn't have, and if she was, then shame on those who allowed that statement. Well, unless someone, okay, so let's take it your way then. Unless someone had, okay, whatever, whatever, we go take it here. Unless someone paid, unless someone paid the attendant who is booking the flight $5,000, $10,000, you're going to pay her some money. She's going to get some good bank to just put, to, to jeopardize her job, jeopardize her freedom and her life. To put a minor on a plane with a password. Because yeah, what if... Uh, okay, so let's take it, let's take it there. It, it, it depends on who made the payment, though. I'm sure they would have found some type of discrepancy in reports from Delta Airline during that time. Uh, I know they had to subpoena something around the time 
to where they're looking at Delta Airlines documentation. They couldn't even, man, they couldn't even, they couldn't even subpoena a butterfly for this incident right here. So, I'm with work. <laughs> so basically, prosecution has nothing. I mean, we can go on the what ifs all day. We can go on the whole concept of conspiracy theories all we want. But the reality of it is, is the prosecution did not prove their prosecution did not prove their defense. And on top of that, it wasted taxpayers time, money. And these 12 little jurors, God bless them with all Lord, Lord. my prayers. Lord, Lord knows, Lord, Lord knows if they do because I'm pretty sure they like, yo, I'm cooking you at my job, right from that, blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm missing such and such and such because I'm fooling with this. Like, mm hmm, mm hmm. They're missing their kids. They're missing what's going on in their kids' life, listening to this. And now they could have been prone to even opening up to the idea of child pornography. We don't know what type of seeds were planted and what they heard, what they saw. Were they strong enough to hear that? Were they strong enough to to not let this buy into the test of what they're going to have to go through now in life since they've seen it? Now, my, and, 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 and the one thing that got you worried about them as jurors is, are, do, do any of you guys know the other two guys? Yeah, everybody knows what's his name. Everybody knows him. Uh, but do everybody knows Milton and mm. what you call it? But, you know, they say the jury of your peers. Mm -hmm. I don't think half of these people know Milton Brown and Daryl David. Like if I went to my step right now and said, Mom, say, did you know a, a, a guy named Daryl McDavid? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I have no idea if you know who is that. Right, right. Exactly, R. Kelly. Yeah, and that's true. You know, so this is something I want us to meditate on as Kelly Nation, you know, to get deeper into the, the hearts and the mind space and the, the, the ups and downs and the highs and lows of what this jury is going through because we are we could be the jury sitting in on that panel based on what we're talking about right out here we could be one of those jurors and it only takes one as the guys say to have a hung jury to say this there's not enough evidence and i'm not going to i'm not going to judge this man to the point where i i say that he's guilty so that's going to bring another rule 33. It's going to put a whole new trial on the docket in the federal uh, 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 criminal, the federal uh, um, trial. At that point. Let's say he did, or let's say he, because everybody else said that. So that's just going on. And I think that was what New York was doing. Like, when New York went, like, that was literally what it was. It was more like a, well, Lifetime and YouTube and Twitter and Black Twitter, Green Twitter, Yellow Twitter, and all of them Twitter, they all said this and this and that. So let's roll with what they say and then we'll just make our, and, you know, we'll let them make their predictions and then when we get to the actual court where the actual prediction takes place and the actual factual facts and everything comes. This is what we will present. We will get them what they've been given, what they've been given all this time. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thank you for being here and giving us your opinion. I mean, you got me actual and factual. Ain't that TLC? It's actual yeah. and <laughs> factual. And what, and. Uh -huh. It's just like so many people in the mu in the music industry. Didn't one of those girls die too in a plane crash, or was it left eye? Oh uh, uh, yeah, but well, yeah, but Lisa didn't die in a plane crash. She died in another one. Uh, she passed. Uh, I don't know how. She well, God rest her soul. Because my, my spirit is thinking about her right now. It's like, you know, I just wonder, like, 
are these people safe? Or are is their spirit you know, safe? You know. It's funny. You know what's funny? I, I was talking to somebody earlier today about money, and it wasn't about like just like like rich people and all that. I was talking about how what's his name don't really have the money that he would have had if if Sony had given him the nine hundred million dollars that he was worth. Mm-hmm. Uh, he don't, you know, he he would have been in that conversation of the richest, uh, successful music artist. He would have been up there with Kanye and Jay and all of them, right? Yeah. Well, uh, if you look at his money and where he where he's at, far as how much he's worth at, at the moment. And if you look at how much like Turk like and see him or uh Ja with uh, uh some of these other people, he's falling a line in that conversation versus where he should be at. Mm-hmm. So if you look, so what I'm trying to say is if you look at how all of that stuff is aligning with everybody else, it's kind of it's kind of, it kind of makes you kind of feel like the 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 it kind of makes you think that there is power in I guess things that that you speak and things that you do and mm-hmm. things that happen is power in them. Yeah, it is. It is. And and I thought you were going to go this way with it. If he was given a $900 million, okay, that he was worth, and then this situation came up with the whole child pornography and all that, would right. his money have been enough? Would it have been long enough to get him out of this situation? I think it would have been, it would have been, it would have been. It, man, it would have been extra long. Mm-hmm. Now the question, though, would 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 be though, if if you ask him that, then wouldn't that give him room to brag that he got away, you know, with whatever because he spent his money? Um, because it's, if it's, it if it's all about if it's all about the money anyway, would that really even matter? No, not really. Him bragging about it and him just going on and paying it all off. Because that's what they want anyway. But they just put him in reverse. They took all the money away and then, because they have to have a reason to put his money away or take all of his money away and, you know, and then put him in a corner in a timeout room to where he can't make any more money to whereas they're saying, okay, you're all dried up. And I don't get this whole thing with Sony being angry at him for not making money. Guess what? His royalties are making money continuously. Who said Sony was mad at I don't know. I read, I uh, was listening to something, and they said that Sony could possibly be angry at the fact that they're, that he was a cash cow for them. And he's not out here making money. Well, the pandemic stopped that anyway. The pandemic well, stopped, well, you know, millions of people in a concert coliseum. They stopped that. Right. So they weren't going to get their money that way. Right. But prior to that, it's their fault for dropping him early on. He had two more albums to put out. Right. Uh, before his contract was completely completed. So then you're saying that they reneged on the agreement, Sony. Exactly. So why would Sony yeah. be mad? That's that's the point I'm making. Got you it. Can't be mad at something that you did. Right. I just didn't understand really? it because I know that there's other ways that you can make money. You could do a concert on your internet. You could do it on your on a website with a you know ten. Uh, there's cameras. I did a a. Uh, I looked up the most expensive camera that you could purchase. That camera was over five hundred fifty thousand. Just a camera, just a camera. 
So you could put him in a coliseum and put him on a stage and he can be the only one in the whole uh, crowd and do a concert. He can do like what he did for his tribute to Sam Cooke. He took his living room his living room and made it, I guess, I guess appear like a stage or something. And, and he, yes. You know, yeah, he could do that. And you know what? I think that's what they knew he was about to start to do. He was about to just own his own thing. Y'all don't got to pay me no more. I'm just going to run my own music. I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it with, you know, less costs, overhead costs. And I'm going yeah. to still do it right. I'm going to still shine. Yeah, because, yeah. And I think that's one thing he was trying to do too. Because I know uh, he was trying to drop a new album in 2017, with Tony, because mm-hmm. he, he, he still had his contract behind him, so like he couldn't like not put out nothing. But Sony talking about him, well, well, Sony talking about. I read all the film based and a representative from the record label and had commented and said, "Well, look, uh, we let a little bit of pressure from the media come our way." Uh, because of that lifetime thing, and we had no choice but to drop. I'm like, hmm. I just wish. Y'all... I wonder what it would look like, Tim, if Lifetime had not promoted the docu series until after this was over. How would that look? It. It. Well, this is what it will. It. It. It will. In your case, look like and this is what it would sound like to me. It would sound like this. It would sound like what would happen is he would have already outlived the contract by that time. Mm. And there wouldn't be any dropping that they would do. I mean, they would just have to do whatever. Now, yeah. now that he has the uh, leverage, now they can, they can, now they have to give it to him. Now, I'm not saying they will. Mm-hmm. But they, have, but they, 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 they somewhat got kind of mm. right at this point because because he has so many legal issues going on at one time. Right, yeah. right. He didn't have any legal issues, then yeah, they can just keep the money and do whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I thank you so much for being a part of this podcast. I know it was like. Just I just threw you out there, right? <laughs> yeah, you can say, yo, you can say, hey, yo, you wanna, you know what I'm saying? You ain't none of that. You can say, hey, yo, let's get to it, homie. Let's talk. Let's do it like we always do it, like we yeah. do it this time. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wanted to leave something on Kelly Nation's mind um, for their support, for our supporters to really. Get a get them just meditate over the weekend now that you know there's nothing to report as far as you know the court issues that because there is no court and there won't be court until Tuesday. So, well, yeah, because it's the holiday, right? So, let's just meditate on this because now we got a little bit of time to let this all sink in so we can even figure out what we're feeling about it, you know? And, um, so yeah. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna listen to some of your um your um stuff too, man. Thank you, and give me your point. You know, put it in a live because this will be on. I will have this on tomorrow. I was gonna put it on about nine tonight. I should do that. Just just post it on. But uh, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then I can give my voice a break until my a Tuesday. Come on now. <laughs> unless I, my I, student I, unless my student comes in to the chat um and wants to do her premiere on Sunday. That's the only time I come back on. So you guys go ahead and catch up on R. Kelly Appeal TV. And let me know what you you think. And thank you, Tim, for the um, information that you shared and what you said about the motion 
um, that we just talked about tonight. How did you feel about that one? But we'll talk about that another day. Um, I mean, you know, you know, you know, you know, I didn't really touch on the motion except for, so since you're here, I'll just say it like this. The fact that she put it out there so that it'll, it'll already be in our mind what she's trying to do. Mm -hmm. So it worked. That's a good step. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. I mean, don't wait until it's completely things to be like, oh shoot, and what about a quitter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, because I think that's one thing that ends up happening in New York. Like, and granted, that's when she came. She came after everything was was, was, was over. Which most people, most most of them, most most of your family will come after it ends. Yeah. She's not yeah. even really supposed to be doing this part. But all the other attorneys jump ship, she just chose to do it. But she was the appeals attorney, truly. Right. How brave. Man. Yeah, I'm telling you, God bless her. And like um a few of my a few of our Kelly Nation supporters said, God bless her, God bless Robert and God bless the jury that they have what it takes to make the right decision to, you know, to do this we thing the right way. We ain't heard nothing seen since like late June or early July. It'll all come out. It will all come out. Even if it's like um, later, it's all going to make sense. Trust and believe it will. Jennifer going to get back to that, but she just so doing so much. So I thank everybody for being here. Um, Tim, you got any final things to say? No, I don't. Because <laughs> <it's>, I never... <laughs> <laughs> You silly. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> All right. Thank everyone for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We really appreciate your views. So please, I'm going to drop... 10 minutes of silence in the chat so you can put any of your final thoughts in there and it will be held up for live. And then when I record the next time, I will make sure to include it in the um, in the video. So thank you so much. And as always, thank keep you. it 100. Y'all stay strong out there. Man. One love. One love. <laughs> Peace and love.